Hey again. Uh, in this video, we're going to switch from talking about what it is that build societies to where do they build them. Now, uh, obviously, they build them in specific places. But the key idea that we're going to be talking about here is the idea of ecosystems. So we're going to do a very, very, almost criminally brief overview of the laws of ecology. I mean, like, if you are an ecology person, I apologize. But it's going to be good enough for what we need. All right, so where do our species, remember, we're talking about a, a, a species of pack animals that evolved over hundreds of thousands of years. And even though we still, you know, we don't think of ourselves as connected to nature as our hunter-gatherer ancestors were, we still are set up in ecosystems. So let's talk about ecosystems. Uh, to begin with, oh, and you've got our um, terms. We only have four terms today. Uh, ecosystems carrying capacity, overshoot, and collapse. And I'll define each of them in turn. Uh, to begin with, where do, uh, where do we build societies in ecosystems? We're going to define ecosystems as a biological community of interacting organisms. The idea of community is going to be important here, but first let's talk about just the idea of interacting organisms. We tend to elevate ourselves above the rest of the animal kingdom, and I'm not telling you not to necessarily, but it does bear just a moment to think about the fact that as we go through our lives, we are interacting with insects, whether we are trapping them and taking them out of our homes or slapping them to kill them or whatever we're doing. There's an interaction. They exist we exist. We're interacting with other mammals. If you've got a dog or a cat, or you've got squirrels in your yard, you've got birds that you interact with in terms of if you have a bird feeder or whatever. All of these, and, and this is just in terms of animals. Then you also talk about the fact that we interact with the trees, whether we're cutting them down or pruning them or just driving around them. All of these species, and then of course the food that we eat, whether it's animals or vegetables, um, this is an interaction. It's a big, if you were to look down at a particular, you know, set of uh, acres or something, what you would see is, if you took our sort of species-centric view out of it, what you would see is a whole bunch of organisms, human beings, squirrel, corn plant, grass, fly, mosquito, whatever. All of them sort of moving around and interacting with each other. And that's what we want to think about in terms of an ecosystem. Um, it is a biological community, oops, sorry, a biological community of interacting organisms. Now let's focus on this idea of community for just a moment. Um, ecosystems, and this is not part of um, one of these terms yet, but the idea here um, with a community is that it is, there's a degree of balance to it. It doesn't mean that everybody gets along. I mean, obviously we don't. We hunt each other. We kill each other just because we're annoying. Like, I mean, if you, if you slap a mosquito, that's like we're in, like interacting with each other and there's a degree of balance, but it's not like we're all friends. Um, the idea of community isn't meant to connote the idea of friendship. It's meant to connote the, uh, uh, connote the idea of a degree of balance. But that balance is fragile. In the sense that at any particular time, um, a particular species could end up rising in population to the point that it unbalances the community. And that's going to take us to our next idea. So ecosystems, excuse me, Ecosystems are communities that are generally in balance, but the balance is fragile. Now what we're going to do is take our focus away from the community and into a particular species. Let's start with deer. Let's just say we're living in some, the ecosystem that we're above looking down on has a bunch of deer in it. Um, if those, those deer are going to go around and they're eating the plants that they eat, but it's possible that they could that they, if they don't have predators there to, um, to draw their numbers down, they could end up eating so much grass that they eat all of it, and then all of a sudden there's none to go around. 
This is the idea behind carrying capacity and overshoot. So let's start with carrying capacity. Within that community, every species has a carrying capacity. And the carrying capacity is defined as the upper limit on the number of organisms in a species. So again, let's talk about those deer. Say there are a thousand deer that the ecosystem can support. The carrying capacity is a thousand. Upper limit on the number of organisms in a species that the system can sustain. All of those species in that, um, in that community have a carrying capacity. If you exceed the carrying, and that means, what that means is everything is balanced, um, but the balance is fragile. There could become, let's say that wolves for some reason get some disease and wolves die back a little bit. There aren't enough wolves to deal with the deer population. The deer population skyrockets. The deer eat more grass and their interaction with that particular species, the species of grass, they eat too many or too much of it, and then all of a sudden there isn't enough grass to go around and you've got deer starvation. Okay, that the maximum number that the, uh, that the community, that the ecosystem can support is called carrying capacity. If you exceed that, that's what's called overshoot. So overshoot is gonna be really simple to define. Carrying capacity is the upper limit on the number Overshoot is just very simply exceeding carrying capacity. When you exceed carrying capacity, you overshoot. That's just the definition of overshoot. Um, and that's really the, all there is to know about overshoot. Let's move straight then into our last term. This will be my record for shortest video. Um, collapse. When you overshoot, you the species, when a species overshoots, it creates a collapse. When overshoot happens, The particular species goes through a collapse. And collapse is defined very specifically as, I mean, somewhat simply too, as a reduction in population. So let's start with that because there's another element to the uh, definition that you need to know as well. Um, so let's say that the, that the ecosystem that we're looking at could support a thousand deer. And, but the wolves have a disease, so all of a sudden the deer uh, become overpopulated. They rise up to maybe 1,100 deer. But 1,100 deer is more than the ecosystem can support. It's beyond the carrying capacity. They eat more grass than they can. There's not enough grass to go around. Eventually there is starvation because the grass doesn't just grow back immediately. It takes time for it to grow. So you've got starvation. You have overshot and then the number of deer collapse. So they went from 1,000. They overshot up to 1,100. Now they drop back down to, let's say, 600 deer. A reduction in population. And that is almost everything you need to know. The last point, and this is the point that is, is subtle and kind of intimidating for us if you start thinking about us in terms of these ecological laws. Um, it is a collapse also uh, reduces one more thing. It also involves a reduction in carrying capacity.
So what that means is that where the ecosystem would have, before the overshoot, supported a thousand deer, now what's happened is they've eaten so much grass, the grass is, uh, is coming back, but the grass doesn't come back in the way that it did before. There's less grass that grows, maybe because another species of plant is, has taken root in some of the places where the grass used to be. But now, after this deer collapse, maybe the ecosystem can only support 700 deer. And as the deer find their balance again, the balance is at a lower level. The balance is reduced because of the collapse. Okay, um, that is all I want to tell you. That is our quick and dirty ecological laws uh, lecture. Um, the issue that's going to transition us into the next element is that in the history of the Earth, and because we only know really about this planet, the history of the universe, as far as we know, there's only been one species that has ever been able to bend these ecological laws that was able to say, okay, so we're in balance with the ecosystem. We have a certain carrying capacity. This is what our overshoot is. Um, but we're going to change things so that we raise our carrying capacity. Only one species in the, in the history of what we know has been able to do that. And that species has done it actually twice. That species probably unsurprisingly is us. So what we're going to do in the next video is see the first time that human beings bent the laws of ecology in order to extend or expand um, what the carrying capacity was for us. I'll see you in that video.